From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. And good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning. Thanks for ending your work week with us here on this Friday at 6 o'clock. I'm Pagan Harsha. Andrea Lutz has the morning off. We begin this hour with the war in Ukraine as bombs and missiles continue to rain down on cities and towns. Missile strikes are intensifying in the Ukrainian capital and the civilian death toll continues to climb. Officials now confirm nearly 2,000 civilian deaths to date, though the real number is thought to be even much higher than that. Rescuers in Mariupol are working to find more survivors at a theater that was hit by a Russian airstrike. Hundreds of people were sheltered there before it was bombarded. Meantime, the Biden administration is discussing ways to take in some of the three million refugees who have fled the violence. It could help hundreds of Ukrainians get to safety here in the U.S. In the meantime, the U.S. government is helping Ukraine's border countries with supplies and funding to help all those displaced people who are seeking refuge there. And this morning, White House officials are confirming the death of a second American citizen killed in Ukraine. While the State Department has not identified that person killed, the family of Minnesota native Jim Hill says he was gunned down while he was waiting in a bread line with several other people. Ukrainian officials have reported that 10 people were killed Wednesday while standing in that same bread line. President Joe Biden and China's leader will speak today about the ongoing war. Mr. Biden plans to tell him there will be consequences if China, the Chinese send military aid to Russia. This despite other U.S. officials saying for now it appears China is not willing to condemn the war in Ukraine. Well, time now to get a quick check on our weather with Miller this morning. We've been talking about that, that moon out there all morning. I got uh, an the idea. worm moon, yeah. Bobcat moon. We're renaming it. You're going to name it the worm in, in honor of MSU's big game today. Oh, yeah, they got the big you, game. You that's right, that? that's right. Yeah, March Madness and one. Do you follow March Madness? Are you a big? I do. This is the first year I haven't actually filled out a bracket, though, in, I think, 20 years. Oh, wow. I think I read online that only like 3% of the brackets are in, are still intact. So what I found already. out, I do a lot better if I fill it in afterward. Yeah. So that's oh. my, my theory this year. If you wait till the games are played, <laughs> your success rate's a lot higher. You are a thinker. Uh -huh. it's all all right. Yeah, all right. We need to have you on the show more often. You probably need to do the weather, do a better job than <laughs> I do. All right, let's take a look out there. I love the crunch numbers, and uh, yesterday, highs and lows pretty much seasonal, right on target where we should be. Didn't get uh, really any moisture to speak of yesterday. It was a beautiful day yesterday. In terms of moisture for the rain, we're pretty much where we should be. Uh, we're pacing a little bit ahead for the year. Uh, snow, we're about an inch and a half on the plus side for the month for uh, the year or the season since July 1st, just under two inches. And we're going to try to add to that as we get into Sunday with the rain and the snow. We'll tell you about what, that with the main forecast coming up. Quickly here in Billings, we're at 39, feels like 30. Winds out of the west at about 18 miles an hour. Again, a complete look at that forecast is straight ahead. All right, thanks, Miller. And we've taken a live look outside at the Pittsburgh Arena. That's one of the locations for those NCAA games. So you got, I know you had Georgia State to win it all, Miller. That's, that's uh, not going to happen anymore. Is Georgia State still even in the tournament? No, they lost out <laughs> the first gonna, round uh, to the number say. one seed. Yeah. You know, I, I, I only, I'm, I'm not a big basketball fan, but I do like watching the Mar March Madness because of the Cinderella teams. Mm -hmm. We've already had a couple of upsets right. already. So that's Kentucky the, to beat. me, that's the exciting part. Yeah, right. First couple, this is the best round of the tournament right here yeah, this week. I agree. Lots Absolutely. All right. right. Thanks, Miller. Okay, bye. Well, there is growing concern this morning here in Billings how to best help those who are homeless in our city. This after the recent closure of the off the street shelter, which cared for anyone, even those with addiction and mental illness issues. As Q2's David Jay explains, the group is now trying to fill that need with a brand new shelter. We think ending homelessness in Billings is possible. And what we'll really work hard at off the streets in doing is working with all those agencies in town that work to serve the same population. So the person begins to feel better about themselves and really believes that maybe they can do this because they can. But it takes somebody believing in them for that, usually for that first step to happen, and then you just stabilize them with sleep and food and all those things that they need. Those basic essentials is what Off the Streets really will provide. Craig Bartle is the founder of the Off the Streets Corporation and for 14 months was the site director of the former Off the Streets shelter at the Western End. He said the shelter was a test run and he plans on having a similar shelter in place by November. It's something that we just feel really strongly. Uh, our faith just compels us you know, to, to do this and to do it well. Bartle says Off the Streets will run a low barrier shelter and try to take care of what he calls the chronically homeless. The old shelter started with COVID funds and Bartle says it was a success he wants to continue. It focuses on stabilizing people through relationship building. So you just really meet that person where they are, befriend them, 
uh, and then help walk beside them as they navigate how to get off the streets permanently. Hey Jason, how's it going? The crime, the drugs, everything like that. Fortunately, I've been able to avoid those circumstances and uh, uh, through Craig's help and through the help of the community, uh, we've been blessed, absolutely. What did Off the Streets do to help you? Just somewhere to be warm, safe, take a shower, you know, be human. Pastor Lisa Harmon says First Congregational Church has taken care of about 30 a night since December 30th and will close on April 3rd. Bartle says he's looking for a new building. We have our sights set on, on a couple different options, uh, but we want to have capacity for 300 people. The Off the Streets Corporation has started the fundraising and will keep looking for donations and grants. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Well, inflation has really done it this time, forcing us to pay extra for beer. You can blame the soaring barley prices right now, up 11% over the past two weeks. Brewers are paying more for wheat as well, and that's forcing them to pass those extra costs on to you, the customer. Several local beer makers tell us the supply chain issues and global shortages certainly aren't helping matters either. Some of the bigger breweries are struggling with aluminum in cans, um, prices, hikes, shortages, minimum ordering requirements. We're having a hard time sourcing parts or, uh, you know, like pump parts and, and just standard uh, tri-clamp fittings for all the piping that we do out here. And if, as if this wasn't enough, brewers tell us they're also concerned about the quality of barley right now. They're expecting a worse product in the middle of the year. And that creates yet another challenge, figuring out how to make your favorite pints just as delicious as they've always been. Well, the price of oil has jumped yet again, now rising over $100 a barrel. Analysts blame renewed concerns over supply as peace talks between Russia and Ukraine are failing to yield any results. As far as gas prices are concerned, though, here locally, Montana is actually seeing a small dip right now, so a little bit of good news here. We're under $4.01 a gallon for the first time all week. And in Wyoming, a gallon of regular will cost you $4.03 right now. Montana's U.S. Senators seem to agree that ramping up domestic production is the best way to help bring those prices down. MTN's Coulter Anstad has more, including what Republican Steve Daines did to spark some conversation on the issue. From Capitol Hill to the hills and gas pumps of Montana, people are talking about energy production. This week, Senator Steve Daines got some perspective when he held a roundtable discussion with industry representatives. Bottom line is uh, unleashing American energy production. It is critical. A roundtable discussion hosted by Montana U.S. Senator Steve Daines lasted over an hour, but it took less than a minute into his opening remarks for him to make his opinion that increasing domestic energy production is critical, clear. Not only for bringing down energy costs and promoting energy independence, but it's also critical for national security. Former U.S. Interior Secretary David Bernhardt shared a personal story about a conversation he had with an Uber driver recently on his way to Capitol Hill. She said, Please tell them we're hurting. We're hurting. It is so hard. The cost of food, the cost of fuel, we're hurting. American Exploration and Production Council CEO Ann Bradbury outlined four steps she would like to see policymakers and the Biden administration take, including clearly supporting all forms of domestic energy production long term. She says messaging from the administration about phasing out oil and gas production, stopping production on federal lands, and blaming the industry for high prices creates what she calls needless uncertainty in the industry. We know that we need a diverse energy mix, but we also know that oil and natural gas are going to be part of that mix for decades to come. All energy production. Montana U.S. Senator John Tester agrees all forms of energy production need to increase and says that includes restarting the Keystone XL pipeline project. I think it's, it's really important that uh, we encourage uh, responsible energy production. He noted there are over 12 million acres of land leased by oil companies that the companies are not drilling on. We need to encourage those oil companies, they've got it leased, go out there and start drilling. We have a link to the full discussion in this story on our website. In Great Falls, Coulter Anstab, MTN News. Now to the latest on the pandemic as yet another pharmaceutical giant is asking for approval for a second COVID booster shot. CBS's Laura Podesta has the update as yet another variant threatens to close another or cause another spike in cases. Moderna has asked the Food and Drug Administration to authorize a second booster shot of its vaccine for all adults. It's a more sweeping request than Pfizer made earlier this week for a fourth shot aimed at seniors. 
Health experts, though, are still urging millions of Americans to get their first shots. If you ask me, will things go well, I'll, I'll return the uh, answer by saying, will everyone do their part? And if everyone does their part, then yes. If not, get ready, because this thing has taken us on a wild ride. Talk of more shots comes as the CDC closely watches the BA2 variant, a subvariant of Omicron, which it warns is more contagious. Some have predicted 30%, others have predicted 80% more transmissible. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says BA2 does not produce stronger symptoms, and our current vaccines or a recent case of Omicron should protect against it. While overall cases in the U.S. are still declining, there are signs of new surges in Europe and Asia. Health experts warn the same could happen here and want Congress to pass a new bill to fund testing, treatment and vaccines. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Even as experts consider a fourth round of shots, slightly less than half of the eligible population has gotten its first booster. Well, NASA is showing off the most powerful rocket ever built. It's going to put Americans on the moon as soon as 2024. The rocket was rolled out to the launch pad during a dress rehearsal on Thursday. The new moon rocket stands at more than 300 feet tall. That's taller than the Statue of Liberty. The rocket will take the real ride to the launch pad for the blast off scheduled for May or June. Well, just a couple hours from now, the Montana State Bobcats men's basketball team is going to play their first NCAA tournament game in, yes, more than 25 years. Hard to believe it's been that long. The Cats will take on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, and it's going to be a, a challenge for the team. The number three seed made the Final Four just a few years ago, and they are led by a hard-nosed defense. Certainly no easy task for the Cats, but they believe they actually have an unintentional edge in this game. Turns out MSU has been studying the Red Raiders for months. About six weeks ago, I wasn't very happy with our defense. I thought we were getting pretty selfish. And so I clipped up about 25 clips of Texas Tech's defense. And I showed it to my players. And I was like, this is how hard I want you to play. This is what we have to look like defensively. So you have permission, take the rest of the day off after 11 o'clock. Tip off for this game, 11.45. You can catch the game over on TNT.